1.0 kilometer wide and covers an oil area of 32.3 kilometers squared. The Kingfisher Oil Field Development Project shall comprise the following facilities. Construction of a 40,000 BOPD design capacity CPF, four well pads, linking of the well sites to the CPF by production flow lines and water injection lines, lake water intake pump station, permanent camp, supply base, safety check station and temporary camp. The well fluid from the Kingfisher field will be transported to the central processing facility, CPF, via flow lines from individual well pad. Crude oil from the two CPFs will be transferred to the delivery point at Kbal, which is 50 kilometer away by a feeder line. Associated gas shall be used as fuel for internal power generation and heating energy. Excess gas will be treated for LPG production by recycling C3 and C4. LPG products are sold through tankers. Produced water treated by oil and water separation facilities shall be re-injected. Lake water is taken in for oil field water use and shall be treated by CPF and transported to oil field water use units through transfer line. CPF is located in the middle of the entire oil field, covers an area of about 169,000 square meters. The factory area is divided by functions as follows. Office area and administration quarter, production water treatment area, oil and gas treatment area, LPG storage and loading shed, shared project area. The shared project area including including power station and distribution area, center control area, public water treatment and fire pump area, public equipment area, storage areas, Oil field well pads distribute along shores of Lake Albert from south to north, followed by well pad of well pad 3, well pad 1, well pad 2, well pad 4A. The well pad is divided into drilling area and oil and gas production area. Facilities of drilling area include rig, mud pools, diesel generators, mud pumps, office containers, oil and gas production area include Christmas trees, wellhead control panel, multi-phase flow meter, chemical systems, pig, well pad 3 covers an area of about 43,600 square meters, a total of 10 wells, 6 oil wells and 4 water injection wells. Well pad 1 covers an area of about 46,300 square meters, a total of 7 wells, 5 oil wells and 2 water injection wells. Well pad 2 covers an area of about 38,000 square meters, a total of 10 wells, 6 oil wells and 4 water injection wells. Well pad 4A covers an area of about 42,000 square meters, a total of four wells, three oil wells, and one water injection wells. Permanent camp is located on the west of CPF and can accommodate 120 people living as well as accommodation, office, living, and entertainment in an integrated living area. Lake water is taken in for oil field water use and shall be treated by CPF and transported to oil field water use units through transfer line. The safety check station located at the top of Escarpment Road for security and safety check purposes. There are three partners for Lake Albert Oil Development Project Ugandan government, 
namely CNOOC Uganda Limited, Total ENP Uganda BV, and Tolau Uganda Limited. The operatorship of Kingfisher is held by CNOOC Uganda Limited. FEED Engineering of Kingfisher Field Development Project is performed by consortium of COOEC and SEC, which lays a solid foundation for the subsequent EPC. Fully sail with strong wind on wide sea under broad sky, compose a new chapter with one heart and great aspiration. Under the leadership of CNOOC Uganda Limited, all staff with more enthusiasm, more active state, steadily promotes the project in accordance with the established schedule and high quality. Take practical action to meet the new chapter of international companies' overseas development. In the near future, a modern oil production facility will be erected on the banks of Lake Alberta in Uganda. Company adheres to the win-win concept, actively fulfills social responsibility, promotes the harmonious development of the company and local communities, and enhances the traditional friendship between the Uganda and China people. The Belt and Road Initiative benefit the African land. Yes, good afternoon and welcome to UBC TV. And this is the long awaited uh, Sino Q1 National Content Supplier Development uh, e conference. And uh, we know COVID is real. Uh, allow me to remove my mask so that I can, I can communicate uh, properly to all of you who are watching us. Thank you, UBC, for hosting us. And this uh, Maiden uh, Q. Uh, Sinoc Q1 National Content Supplier Development uh, e-conference 2021. Remember we were here in November uh, 2020 and we were talking about strengthening the capacity of those who are participating in the agriculture sector. But this time around Sinoc together with Burado that is a Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization have thought about uh, the small and medium enterprises. Those of you who are doing such kind of businesses as in small and medium enterprises to see that they strengthen uh, your capacity to effectively participate in the oil and gas sector in the country. This conference has got two sessions. The first session, I shall have Mr. Martin Biaruhanga. Martin Biaruhanga is the executive director, Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization, call it Brado, is with me here and is part of the organizer, together with uh, Sinoco, of course. Once again, my name is Bienkia Fred. I'm going to be the moderator of this particular show. Now, the other uh, uh, discussant is uh, Mr. Alex Biamukama, who is the National Content Officer from Petroleum Authority of Uganda. These are the regulators. He's seated at the extreme end of the arrangement. And I also have Sinok. Uh, you know, this Matthew Biaranga, we're together here for the the other session i mean uh, the other e-conference for uh, those who are participating in the agriculture sector now we are right back for another one national content manager sinok matthew Berhanga, you're most welcome but before all that allow me to invite mr martin biaranga who is ex the executive director uh Brado, to take us through uh, as in why do we have this e-conference why is it not in the region maybe it would be in hoima it would be in guru it would be in kabale it would be in soroti but it's on tv and we call it an e-conference mr martin you're most welcome for your introductory remarks thank you so much uh thank you very much mr moderator uh dear viewers uh since i'm observing social distance Please uh, kindly allow me to first remove my mask. Uh, <coughs> uh, this is for effective expression. Uh, my name is uh, Martin Biaruhanga. I'm the executive director of Brado. Brado is the Bonyo Research Agency and World Organization. Actually, we are the organizers of this e conference together with our partners, Snoka Uganda Limited. Actually, Snoka is the host, and we are in the studios of UBC. Nakasero, Kampara. Uh, as already stated, uh, Brado is a company limited by guarantee, a uh, stroke uh, NGO. Uh, we are basically looking into the issues of livelihood, community livelihood, and empowerment of that reason. That's why we uh, looked around our region, Albertine region, specifically Bonyoro sub region, 
and we identify the problems, issues that are affecting our community in as far as oil and gas is concerned. Uh, it is for this reason that uh, we came up with the theme, uh, strengthening local SMEs for effective participation in the development phase of oil and gas sector in Uganda. The purpose for this was that uh, to ensure that equal participation of all uh, small and medium enterprises to ensure that they all benefit from oil and gas. We know oil and gas is real in our, in our region and we are now moving to the development phase. But uh, before the, the real exportation of the oil and gas, we are looking at uh, uh, opportunities and advantages that the local community can be benefiting from other than waiting for the real product that's only going to be in market, both local and international markets. And that's why we have come up with this uh, uh, e-conference uh, because we know that, uh, as we shall be being explained by our panelists, that most our SMEs are not participating in this oil and gas. So for that reason, that's why now why we are, we are here. Uh, we have brought on board uh, specific partners. Uh, first of all, we have our regulator, as I already mentioned, is Mr. Alex Biamukama from Petroleum Authority of Uganda. And uh, this one will be talking about the issues to do with the, the, uh, the current status as far as oil and gas is concerned. Because most people are asking questions, what is happening, and especially issues to do with the pipeline, issues to do with um, uh, investment decision, what, what, what's happening. So these are the, the main questions. And I'm very sure, of dear viewers, that as people are presenting, then you'll be sending some of your comments, questions on the slide. I'm sure the moderator is going to do it for you, uh, how, to, to, how to do it, or expect you how, how to do it. And uh, we also have our main sponsor, uh, that is the Sunoka Uganda Limited, being represented by Mr. Matthew Chiarigonza. He's not, he's not, Mr., he's not Mr. Ruhanga, but he's Ma, Mr. Matthew Chiarigonza. He's the National Contract Manager, uh, Sunoka Uganda Limited. Actually, for him, he's going to give us the key highlights on the issues to do with the opportunities, challenges, because are the people who give these o o jobs to these oil companies. So he will tell us what experience are they going through, and uh, of course, I uh, try to, to tell our viewers how to overcome some of these challenges. Then um, we shall have we shall have the second session. I'm sure when the, those people come here to also to explain, but I can also introduce them. We shall have Mr. Fred Musinguzi. Fred Musinguzi is not here, but he's just there as viewers. He'll, he'll be uh, representing uh, the uh, uh, business community in Bunyoro sub-region, not only Bunyoro sub-region, but since the issues are the same, also at the national level. So he'll come and tell us what are the challenges these people are here facing and why, what are the limitations for their effective participation. That's what we're expecting from uh, these panelists. Then, now, uh, of course, we also have someone from, a gentleman from um, a small, a Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, Uganda. Uh, that, is, uh, Mr. that is Mr. John Warusimbi. Uh, John Warusimbi, of course, is, uh, is going to do the same job like Fred Musinguzi, but for him, he's more at the national level. He looks, he looks at all SMEs in Uganda at, at national level. So, uh, I, again, he'll also support his colleague, Fred Musinguzi. Then, lastly, but not least, we are going to have uh, Madame uh, John Warusimbi. Also, John Walsing will give, come up with issues to do with the national standards. Because we know oil and gas standards are, are real and are very, very important if you're going to supply oil and gas. And therefore, we have tried to look at the real quality. Uh, people can come later and explain these issues as co concerning the oil and gas or the limitations that are likely to affect our community. So uh, for those few issues or what ex ex explanations, I don't want to uh, waste out of time because what the people are waiting for is the real discussion, the real presentation, uh, the issues, the real issues affecting the, the community. So, uh, Mr. Fredo, allow me to stop here. Once again, I'll be coming maybe to give more highlights. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Martin, for the keynote, I mean, uh, the introductory remarks. And uh, as I have told you, we are live on UBC. This is UBC TV. We are going to be here for two hours from now to two to around 4 p.m. But those of you who are watching us, you can also go on our Slido, and the Slido.com is uh, www.slido.com, and uh, the code is 92112. Slido, 
where you can post your comments and all the concerns that you want to be addressed by a section of panelists who are already with us here. As uh, um, Mr. Martin has also said, uh, the other group for the second session is seated somewhere there because when we are done with this one, we shall have to invite them so that they can also come and give us the insight in terms of requirements and challenges that are in different sectors. Uh, now, allow me to also inform you that uh, you can get us on social media platform for UBC. We are there. And also Kavarega TV online. We can also be gotten from that very platform. Now, let me invite Mr. Um, Alex Biamkama, the National Content Manager, Petroleum Authority of Uganda. These are the regulators of the whole sector. We need to hear from them and give us the update. We are here in November last year. We had an update. What, but what has transpired so far since November last year? Thank you so much, Mr. Biamkama. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Uh, my name is Alex Biamkama and I'm the National Content Officer uh, and not the manager, just to correct that. <laughs> um, good afternoon, viewers. Uh, greetings from the PAU. Mr. Moderator, I would request that uh, since we're observing social distancing, I remove my mask so that I'm more audible. Thank you very much. Um, again, good afternoon, uh, viewers. Greetings from the PAU. I would like to thank CINOC for this opportunity for inviting the PAU to participate in this um, quarterly supply engagement. And uh, we should look forward to such engagements as the PAU because it gives us an opportunity to share, you know, uh, to talk about the issues that affect suppliers, to highlight opportunities, take stock where we've reached and where we've come from, and the opportunities that, are, that lie ahead. So I have a brief presentation. We were requested to talk about the, uh, the status update of the sector. Um, we'll run through the presentation. We hope we'll be able to catch time. It's a bit uh, detailed, but we'll make sure we, we go through it quickly. So that presentation that uh, you are looking at, it's uh, clustered in several uh, sections. If you go to the next slide, we'll have uh, the introduction. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, the PAU. Uh, who we are and the different partners that we work with. We'll have a look at the overview of the projects uh, like uh, my colleagues mentioned that we need to know where we are. Uh, people have been asking. We'll also look at briefly the opportunities. I know my colleague from CINOC is going to highlight most of the opportunities but it's going to be good for us also to highlight some of the drivers for these opportunities so that the SMEs out there get this whole picture of um, what is in stock for them and why they need to really prepare for these opportunities that we will be talking about. And then we we'll also look at um, some of the initiatives that uh, the PAU, together with government, uh, what we've been able to undertake to make sure that uh, the SMEs are prepared to be able to participate ably uh, in the sector. And lastly, we'll just look at the concluding remarks. So that is who we are, uh, the PAU together with um, the rest of the government agencies. The oil and gas sector is largely uh, spearheaded by three institutions, but these also work uh, in conjunction with other key government agencies. We have the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Development, which takes care of uh, aspects to do with uh, policy formulation, the licensing aspects. We've probably heard of the latest um, licensing round, so the ministry is taking forward uh, most of these aspects. We also have the PAU, uh, where I come from, we major regulate and monitor the compliance of um, the different regulations and the legal framework in relation to the oil and gas sector. And particularly, we, we regulate uh, what we call the midstream and uh, the upstream. There's a segment called the downstream, but that is under the ministry. Um, we also have the, Nash, the Uganda National Oil uh, Company, which is the commercial government arm that takes uh, forward the commercial aspects. They have interest in the different fields um, that are being uh, taken forward. Um, other than these three that we, we've highlighted, we work closely with other government agencies. We work closely with the institutions like NEMA to make sure that we, 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 we take care of the environment in the process of extracting and uh, getting out the oil. We also work closely with the Ministry of Finance, which takes care of the fiscal uh, regime aspects. 
So we'll move on to the next slide and look at uh, uh, the PAU uh, and the other projects uh, that we're talking about. So what we are looking at here, uh, viewers, is uh, a snapshot of uh, the details of the projects that we are talking about. We have about 21 oil discoveries. Uh, we have about 6.5 billion uh, barrels of oil in place. And out of that, what we can ably extract at the moment is 1.4 billion uh, barrels. But with the introduction of um, uh, new technologies, we hope that we'll be able to extract much more than the 1.4 billion. We have about 500 uh, billion cubic feet of gas, um, and we have different players uh, in the sector that take care of, of, of these uh, projects. We have Sinoc, the, the, the company that has organized this event. We have Total, we have uh, Ama Energy, we have Aranto. We all know that uh, Talo of recent rel re relinquished uh, its interest to Total. Go to the next slide. Again, that's a snapshot on um, the different companies that are, that are taking for the different uh, uh, projects, uh, other than Talo that I've already mentioned, uh, which takes care, which which has relinquished its interest to to Total. We have uh, Total, we have Sinoc, we have Ama, and Oranto. Ama and Oranto are still in the production, in the exploration phase. They are still exploring um, their fields, and we hope that uh, they will be able to land on a commercially viable uh, reserve so that they can also transition into the development and production phase. Now, Total and Sinoc have progressed into the development uh, phase, uh, like my colleague will be mentioning. And right there, what you see is what will excite the SMEs. That is the value of, of, of uh, the whole project that we're talking about. We're talking about 15 to 20 billion US dollars of investment. Now, this is going to be invested in the, in the different uh, segments that you can clearly see on the screen. Um, we have the upstream development, which we've talked about, that uh, is spearheaded by Sinoc and uh, Total. Um, that is the Tilenga Kingfisher uh, by Sinoc, and then the rather Tilenga by uh, Total, and then Kingfisher by uh, Sinoc. And the other project that we, we will excite us is the Uganda Refining Project, which is uh, taken forward by uh, Uganda National Oil Company. Earlier, we looked at uh, UNOC, that takes care of uh, the government interests. So that is a 60,000 barrels of oil per day refinery, uh, which is going to cost between three to four billion uh, US dollars. We also talked ab we talk about uh, the East African crude oil pipeline. My colleague mentioned that people you know, are excited about the ECOP, what we call the ECOP. Uh, that is going to cost about 3.5 billion US dollars. It's going to run from uh, Kabale to Tanga in Tanzania. Uh, that length is about 1,445 uh, kilometers. So it's, it's going to be the longest heated pipeline, and it crosses through about 10 districts in, in Uganda. The largest portion is, is, is in Tanzania, but in Uganda also has um, some portion. And then, of course, we also have the supporting infrastructure uh, that we expect to cost about one billion US dollars. And these include the airport, the industrial park, uh, the roads. We all know the Kavale International Airport, which has uh, progressed very well. Uh, we've heard of the industrial park. Uh, that will house um, petrochemical industries in Kabale as well, and the number of roads that are being set up to support the development of the oil and gas sector. And those roads, are, uh, it's, it's about 700 kilometers of tarmac road. So that is all being uh, constructed in the Albertine Graben to make sure that oil is easily uh, facilitated. So all those aspects uh, the, the projects that you've seen, that's the 15 to 20 billion US dollars that we're talking about. And that should excite uh, SMEs. And I'm sure my colleague from Sinoc will be taking you through some of the specific opportunities that lie in there and how you can actually participate as, as an SME or as, 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 as an entity. And um, key among the aspects still on the, se on, on the status, we have key agreements that are being taken forward. Uh, we have uh, the intergovernment 
agreement which was uh, signed uh, sometime back in 2017. We also have key agreements that are being concluded, and those include the host government agreements, uh, we include the shareholders uh, agreements, and the TTT, which we expect to be concluded very soon, and then we take forward um, the project. Um, in terms of uh, opportunities, uh, there are key drivers uh, that uh, really drive uh, the interest that we're talking about that should, should really excite the SMEs. Um, I talked about a bit of infrastructure that is being put in place. We believe that that infrastructure is, whereas it's going to support the oil and gas sector in terms of, um, uh, in terms of supporting the transportation, bringing in of cargo, it will, it's also going to support um, the local SMEs who are involved in different business activities. If we talk about the roads, if we talk about uh, the airport, an SME that is involved in agro-processing or even an entity or a business that is involved in farming should be really excited because that gives an avenue for transporting your goods to the different markets, uh, whether within country or even exporting because of um, the airport. Again, one of the key drivers uh, for the different opportunities that my colleague will talk about um, is the number of people that will be going to the Albert and Graben. We're talking about about one million people that will flock the Albert and Graben. Now, that is an opportunity for people who are, who are dealing in um, accommodation, people who are dealing in, uh, in uh, restaurants, in hotels, and, and, and all other services. So such a market, such a population really, is an opportunity to get excited about. And uh, right there, what you see, that arrow points to some of the services that uh, will be available or that SMEs can actually look out for. And we talked about the industrial park. That is very exciting because if you are an SME out there and probably you're looking for where to set up or to expand your business in areas of agro-processing, we know that um, <coughs> with, with, with the oil and the refinery, a lot of byproducts are going to come through. And UNOC, of course, is taking forward the industrial park. There's an opportunity for people to set up various businesses in the industrial park to be able to use some of these byproducts as their uh, raw materials to, co to, to, to produce finished products for market and um, exports. Of course, we're talking about 25 years of oil production and the different requirements. We're talking about three to five years of construction where there will be a lot of requirements in terms of transportation, in terms of uh, a skilled manpower, in terms of equipment, in terms of accommodation. So all those are opportunities uh, that will be um, that will come as a result of uh, these activities. As we proceed to the next slide, uh, colleagues, we'll look at some of the aspects uh, relating to the different sectors. You could be an SME out there, and uh, you, you're probably not directly involved in oil and gas sector. And you're wondering, OK, me, how does this oil and gas sector affect me? Or how can I participate? Or where do I come in? Now, the slide that you see right there, uh, touches on the different um, sectors of the economy. We all know the oil and gas sector touches on pretty much a bulk of the sectors of the economy. And at the PAU, we are trying to drive what we call the sectoral linkages. We're working closely with the different sectors of the economy to make sure that we, we harness these opportunities, these linkages that we, we, we identified. And agriculture, you can see there are a lot of uh, aspects to do with commercial agriculture. We talked about a bit of agriculture and housing. We talked about the number of people that will be going to the Alberta and um, Graben. We also know that um, there's, a, there's, there's a master plan for the, that has been developed by the Minister of Lands on how to set up different um, infrastructure, different housing units. And people need where to sleep. Um, opportunities for hotel uh, set up for hospitality industry, it is immense. Ha where housing, office space, a lot of companies are going to set up in the Alberta and Graben. Um, tour and tourism, we talked about the roads, which we hope will also facilitate the transportation of um, different, uh, uh, different people to the region. Also under aspects to do with um, construction, transport, we expect about 7 million tons of equipment to be moved from, uh, from, 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 from the coast uh, to support the development and construction of different uh, uh, facilities. We're talking about, about 600 trucks that will, will be required every month so those are some of the issues that uh, the SMEs really uh, should look out for 
as my colleague will, will, will really highlight, and that is the need for us to strengthen our existing systems so that we are able to ably uh, participate uh, in the sector. As we move on to the next slide, uh, that is going to be a few of the initiatives that we've taken forward as the PAU and together with government and different stakeholders. I know my colleagues from uh, Sinop also highlight some of the aspects that they've taken forward. To be able to build the SME's capacity to support the oil and gas sector. We all know that the sector is, um, is a very complex sector. Sometimes it requires uh, technical competencies and abilities. You have to meet certain standards. You have to have certain processes and procedures and systems in place. So there has been a lot of work um, that has been undertaken by both government and private sector to make sure that they build the capacity of our existing uh, SMEs. Those are some of the key interventions that uh, we've taken forward. <coughs> the Agriculture Development Program, which has been taken forward by uh, the JV pa partners. Um, that is a program that looks at uh, the agricultural players, the agricultural sector or subsector in the Albert and Graben, particularly in the four districts of Hoima, Chikube, Bulisa, and Noya. So the whole <coughs> purpose of this project uh, is to build the capacity of farmers to be able to not only supply the oil and gas sector, but also to be able to supply the regional markets. Like I earlier, earlier mentioned, the presence of the infrastructure that we're talking about, the presence of the airport that we've talked about, will create a potential for market for the farmers. So that project is ongoing. Uh, it's been ongoing for at least two years now, and a number of uh, benefits have been realized um, under there. We also have the MS, MSME Business Linkage Project for the ECOP. That is about to be launched. It's uh, supported by the African Development Bank. It also seeks to build capacity of um, 200 uh, SMEs along the ECO pipeline. So they will be identified, they will be trained be, um, in terms of the requirements, standards that are needed, um, in terms of uh, corporate governance, so that on how to be able to put together proper business uh, plans and financial records to be able to take some of these funding facilities or opportunities that will be available. Then we also call new to disseminate information, just like uh, what we are doing right here. They say information is the new gold, so if you have this kind of information, we believe that you'll be able to act on it. We also have a proposed industry enhancement center that is going to be able to support different SMEs. Uh, we hope to have it in place very soon. Arrangements are ongoing. Uh, we've also worked closely with our colleagues from Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Uh, you'll hear from them to define and catalog the different standards which we disseminate and share with uh, other uh, parties in, in the sector. So colleagues, those are some of the, the initiatives that we've taken uh, forward as uh, the PAU. And uh, as I conclude, uh, as my last slide says, uh, of course, we all know the sector has now transitioned. I've talked about us, uh, projects that are under exploration, but we also have those that are moving into into development. So we need to prepare. We've highlighted some of the opportunities uh, that uh, there are in. So we need to prepare and be able to participate. And uh, how do we do that? Uh, one of the issues you shouldn't forget or that you need to look out for is the NSD. We've not had an opportunity to talk about the NSD, but a lot of people have heard about the National Supplier Database, which is a database for the suppliers that register on, the, on, on, on that very database, and then they participate. They're given opportunities to supply the oil and gas sector. So that's a very key element. If you're out there and you haven't registered on the National Supply Database, that is the first step for you to be able to participate in the oil and, and, and gas sector. So uh, colleagues, uh, thanks so much for watching. That has been the short presentation from uh, the PAU moderator. Thank you very much, and over to you. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Biamkama Alex, the National Content Officer from Petroleum Authority of Uganda. Thank you for the wonderful insight and the update as regards the oil and gas sector in the country. So, ladies and gentlemen, you picked some of the issues. that your opportunities are very available in the oil and gas sector. What you need to do, you have got to prepare yourself. Remember, we're right here on UBC TV, and uh, this is Sino Q1 National Content Suppliers Development E-Conference on the TV. Now allow me to invite Mr. Matthew Kialgonza. I beg your pardon. 
I had confused your name with BM Kama. Mr. Matthew Kialgonza, the National Content Manager, Sinoku Uganda Limited, to give to take us through the requirements and opportunities and the challenges that are very available uh, for some of us who do supply goods and services. Mr. Matthew, you are most welcome. Thank you so much, uh, moderator, Mr. Fredo. Uh, once again, allow me to introduce myself. My name is uh, Matthew Kialgonza. I'm the National Content Manager of Sinok Uganda Limited. Uh, we are proud to be the organizers of this Q1 uh, National Con uh, Content Supply Development Conference. Uh, but before I proceed, please allow me, because uh, the microphones have been sanitized and there is a good social distance between me and my nearest other person, allow me to remove my mask so that, so that I can be more audible. Thank you so much. Yes. Um, this year, we decided to uh, partner all, uh, with uh, uh, all these, uh, with Brado and uh, these other partners to talk about strengthening uh, SMEs so that they can partake or uh, uh, take part in the upcoming opportunities uh, that are going to come uh, given the the oil and gas sector, which is uh, moving towards FID. Uh, we are very optimistic that in, a very, in very few weeks, uh, FID will be announced and uh, the uh, construction phase uh, of the oil and gas sector in Uganda, like my colleague, uh, my regulator has said, uh, will start and this period is going to uh, see Uganda actually ha get uh, about 15 to 20 billion worth of investment in a period of three to five years. So we are all here to make sure that we try and uh, unveil these opportunities for different sectors, uh, especially the SMEs, uh, to, to be able to supply goods and services for the oil and gas sector. Thank you. My presentation uh, will have uh, only four sections, and I'll try as much as possible to not to repeat what uh, my colleague Alex has already said from PAU. I'll have an introduction. I'll tell you a little bit of background about the Lake Albert Oil and Gas Development Project. I'll also tell you uh, about SMEs in the oil and gas uh, value chain. And also, I'll also talk deeply about Kingfisher work packages and the opportunities there is uh, for SMEs. Then I'll also tell you a little about what uh, us as Sinok Uganda Limited are doing to strengthen SMEs in Uganda so that they can take, partake uh, or get, uh, also invo uh, get involved in oil and gas uh, supplying business. Yes, uh, the introduction about uh, the Lake uh, Albert Oil and Gas Development Project, as you can see on your slides, uh, we have uh, those partners. I will not actually go deep into them because they were already said. We, Sinok, are the operators of Kingfisher Field, which is down south in Buhuka, uh, that is in Kikube district. We also have our joint venture partners, Total ENP, and uh, UNOC uh, uh, is, is, is backing in uh, uh, to take care of uh, gov government's commercial interests. Uh, the co project components uh, include uh, Kingfisher, which, which uh, is managed by Sinok, Tilenga, which is managed by Total E&P, and uh, there will also be a refinery construction that is in Hoima, Kabale. Uh, there is also uh, an export uh, pipeline that is ECOP that is going on. And uh, to take you more on the Kingfisher field, uh, the Kingfisher field is uh, a 40 a uh, thousand barrels of oil per day design central processing facility. We shall have four well pads with 20 uh, producer wells and uh, 11 water injection wells. And we shall have a 50 kilometer feeder line running, fr running from Buhuka all the way to Kabale where the uh, export uh, hub for the crude oil will be. Uh, allow me as well to sh tell you a little bit uh, about the uh, petroleum value chain, uh, which involves the upstream, the midstream, and the downstream. Uh, as CINOC, we are involved in the upstream and a little bit of the midstream. 
and uh, the upstream is uh, the production development and production development and product uh, and exploration and decommissioning while uh, midstream is uh, transportation refining and gas processing uh, while the last one which is very common uh, is the downstream which is the distribution and marketing uh, these are the petrol stations you see on the road so we are concentrating on uh, majorly upstream and a little bit of midstream as Sinoc Uganda and the joint venture partners. Um, now to dive into uh, the real uh, uh, SME value chain, you'll see that uh, what you're seeing on your screens, there are sectors that, uh, you, that are marked in different colors. The innermost circle represents the uh, highly specialist services. These are services that are uh, carried out by highly specialized companies that have hundreds or, or tens of, of uh, experience and lots of capital. They include the companies that do seismic surveys, companies that do uh, rig, rigging, companies that do well servicing. These are highly technical works that uh, uh, we don't expect uh, many or any of the Ugandan companies to actually dwell in much. So the Ugandan SMEs will actually start benefiting largely uh, from the second or the middle circle uh, where we are seeing environmental services, uh, we are seeing field construction, uh, we are seeing uh, site preparation, we are seeing infield services, we are seeing freight services, we are seeing electrical, civil, spare parts, and uh, uh, mechanical uh, uh, and uh, mechanical uh, operations. And this is where uh, we are seeing, we shall see more Ugandans coming on board, or more SMEs, to provide these direct services to the oil and gas companies. And uh, the last one is the indirect services, which is also huge. That is the outer circle, where you will find hotels and accommodation, which uh, Alex hinted on. We shall have customs and clearance. Uh, we shall have HR services, office supplies. We shall have telecoms. We shall have labor uh, and labor training, uh, freight forwarding, waste management, facilities management, uh, general trades. We shall have crane hire. We shall have security. We shall have personnel transportation, we shall have medical services, we shall have IT services, uh, camps services, fuel and emergency services, among others. And uh, the government of Uganda or the Petroleum Authority was so wise that they put in place a law uh, called the National Content Regulations, which we all abide, where um, a, a, about 16 of these services were reserved for only Ugandan SMEs. So the government uh, put in place these laws to ensure that Uganda be Ugandans benefit. And among them uh, is all these I've talked about in the indirect, ex 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 for example, uh, transportation, security, food, um, and, and these are clearly uh, elaborated in the, in, the, in the national content regulations uh, where these uh, services are strictly reserved for Ugandans. We only involve, we bring in uh, on board uh, international companies when there is no Ugandan company that is able or available to do this kind of job. Now, to dive in the real cake, uh, this is the real cake, and I will uh, talk about specifically Kingfisher, where Sinoc is the operator. Uh, will allow me to tell you about the packages. We have about four packages, four main EPC packages. Uh, which is PC1, EPC2, EPC3, EPC4. We shall also have uh, drilling packages. Uh, these are different packages, uh, but for highly specialized uh, services, uh, oil and gas related services. We'll also have construction of 50 uh, uh, resettlement houses, which is actually uh, pro procurement is ongoing currently, and uh, these will be done by Ugandans. There is all the 50 houses will be constructed by Ugandan companies because civil works is reserved for Ugandan companies as per the regulations. Now, the opportunities that lie in there uh, for 
in these packages that I've mentioned, uh, first of all, these big packages like EPC 2, 3, and 4 are uh, 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 highly specialized. So for SMEs in Uganda, small and medium uh, in enterprises in Uganda, there's going to be an opportunity uh, for the subcontracting of uh, things like uh, detailed engineering design, uh, there will be supply of materials, for example, aggregates, steel, cement, gravel, bitumen, and others. There will be a supply of construction equipment. There will also be sections of the work that will be subcontracted to Uganda, and especially, for example, if a package has uh, oil and gas related uh, uh, services and civil works, we shall require the main contractor to subcontract the civil works to the Ugandan companies. So this is where sections of the work, uh, for example, like conductor pipe installation, will be subcontracted to a Ugandan company to see that these civil works are done here in Uganda. Uh, there will also be uh, an opportunity for construction uh, supervision cons uh, services, consultancy services, among others. And these will help us in the construction of uh, uh, our facilities, which shall include uh, well pads, about three well pads, actually four. Uh, the, the fourth one will come in later. We shall also be constructing infield roads. These are the roads which connect uh, the facilities, the different facilities that are in the oil field. We shall also have construction of the supply base, a permanent camp, safety check station, a central processing facility, uh, inflow lines, these are lines that connect from one well pad to another, and also a, a, a lake water intake pump station, temporary camp, and finally a 50 kilometer feeder line from Buhuka or from uh, um, um, Kiangwali to Kabale, yes. So what you see there is a typical uh, well pad uh, layout. That that's how it will look like, and uh, the, the permanent camp that is going to be constructed down there, and all the civil works will be reserved for Ugandans. Um, the other opportunities uh, in the oil and gas uh, uh, sector, and especially uh, King Fisher and uh, uh, the other uh, other uh, packages will include uh, construction of enabling infrastructure. Yes, we, this will be water supplies, waste management, uh, access roads, this, and there will also be, as uh, uh, my colleague Alex from the authority hinted on, there will be uh, an industrial park at Kabale where uh, a petrochemical manufacturing, uh, uh, petrochemical manufacturing, fertilizer, and agro products industry will have to be uh, located and here SMEs will have an opportunity to tap in this into this and uh, actually do associated uh, works and services in regards to this. He also mentioned about the opportunities of uh, re residential, accommodating all these people, hospitality, tourism, health, education. There will also be uh, trade and logistics clusters where you need the, this, these big companies will need warehousing space to hire. There will also be freight and forwarding services. And there will also be an airport where uh, all these products, when, they bring, when these a a aeroplanes come with, uh, for example, uh, materials for the refinery or for the other, uh, 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 um, for the other projects like Kingfish and Tilenga, we don't want the planes to go back empty. This is an opportunity to, for the MS, SMEs to maybe uh, uh, supply food or uh, other commodities to other uh, countries out of Uganda so that these cargo planes which bring equipment can go back with some of these exports, therefore uh, enhancing uh, the, that opportunity. So you might be hearing all these opportunities, but you ask yourself, how do I get in there? How do I get, as an SME, how do I get in to supply these oil and gas companies, or how do I supply CNOC? How, 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 this is how um, 
the, we do the pre-codification, our next slide will show you that uh, we, we go through a process, a very elaborate process where we look at the legal, uh, the technical, and the commercial. So for legal, we look at the vendor information, we look at uh, your legal existence, are you, are your compliance levels, are you registered on the NSD, like Alex said, that is the first. If you're not on the re registered on the national supplier database, you can't supply any company in oil and gas. So that is uh, 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 qualification number one. Register on the national supplier database, have your books, uh, the tax clearance certificate from URA, pay your NSSF workers, and have a national content plan. We look at whether you have any disputes, any lit litigation or offenses. We look at your partners, and the necessary permits and licenses. Then, on the technical bit, we look at uh, uh, your QHS management system. This is very key. Uh, in oil and gas, QHS is priority number one because we don't take any chances. So, with safety, and, uh, and this is paramount. So, we look at your past experience. You look at the relevant uh, uh, certifications. We look at your manpower. We look at your workload. If you have so much workload, we might uh, decide otherwise because if we give, if we see you don't have capacity to take on any more work, we might actually, you might actually miss out. So we also look on the commercial bit. We look at the financial status. We look at your business continuity. We look at your investment and value addition. We look at your organizational structure. We look at uh, your employment structure, financing sources. We look at your sources. Uh, yeah, I mean your policies and procedures and these in, in summary are the, th the three uh, that are legal, technical and commercial uh, that will help you get on to finally the bidder list or the pre-qualified shortlist of vendors that can supply in the oil and gas and uh, as I've said you have to ensure that all these books are in order for you because oil and gas business is very formal and as you are aware, our, most of our SMEs are largely informal. So we need to formalize, we need to get our books in order to be able to supply the oil and gas industry. Then the other is, uh, what, what do we look out for in, uh, when we send you, for example, an invitation to tender, or uh, what we call, other, others call a request for proposal. When we send you a request for proposal, uh, this is when we are giving you an opportunity as CINOC to supply us with goods. We look still at technical, we look at uh, unpriced commercial, we look at legal and regulatory, we also look finally at your pricing. When you qualify, or when you fulfill all the technical requirements, which I talked about earlier, and uh, also fulfill the unpriced commercial requirements, which include the national content plan. We have an issue with uh, the Ugandan SMEs, which we are dealing with. They take na a national content plan for granted. This is not good, because when you request for a, a national content plan, for example, from a Ugandan company, they just write, we are a Ugandan company. This is wrong. A national content plan must be detailed. I encourage you to read the national content uh, national uh, supply, uh, content regulations which clearly define what national content is and what you need to actually include in a national content plan. Then we shall look at the legal and pricing comes in last when you have fulfilled all these three. So these are in, in short the aspects of, of a winning uh, bid or winning proposal from us. Now you can ask also yourself what is Sinoc doing to strengthen SMEs in Uganda? And in a, in, a, in, in a snapshot, these in 2020 alone, we, we all annually, or every year now it has become every year, we are training and certifying at least 30 welders in 2G and 3G. And uh, that is for 2020. We have also, we are also an ongoing training that is being completed by this month it pushed through to from 2020 to now of uh, now the welders that are being certified are currently employed in uh, other sectors 
but we shall when the pipeline begins we shall actually have an opportunity for them to start working with the oil and gas companies then the other is the training and line seeking of 70 heavy goods vehicle drivers which is doing, being done on, a, on an annual basis and these are drivers that will drive the cargo from Mombasa to Uganda these are also being current, currently in the, they have been trained and they're working with other uh, SMEs in Uganda but we are trying to train more so that we have a big pool so that when the activities in the oil and gas begin there will still be room for more uh, to be employed and more to be trained. We are also training teachers, which we are calling the TTT, train the trainers. Uh, the, last year we trained 84 uh, from uh, UPIC, this is in Chigumba, and also we are also training uh, others from uh, UTC Kichwamba. And this is, we are training them to be able also to train others train the trainers and we are getting them international certification that they are able to pass on these skills to Ugandans and uh, be, the Ugandans can be able to partake and the SMEs benefit. We also hold quarterly uh, national content supply engagements. This is one of them and this is well elaborated in the regulations and uh, last year we had four of them. This year this is our very first one. We shall have another three by the, till the end of 2021. We have also uh, would like to announce that we've uh, gotten into a partnership with Stambic Business Incubator uh, that will enable us support and uh, supplier development and enterprise development initiatives. So uh, our partnership with uh, Stambic through an M uh, Stambic Business Incubator through an MOU. Uh, has uh, cemented our relationship and uh, we shall ensure that we support uh, all activities in regard to enterprise development and SME development. And last but not least, allow me to tell you about the planned activities for national content uh, 2021. As Sinoc Uganda Limited, we are going this year, first of all, to have the quarterly uh, supplier development, as we've said, that is We've, this is one of them. We're also going to have an enterprise development training program that will train at least 150 SMEs. And this will ensure that at least uh, some SME, uh, at least 100 of these SMEs will be from the Albertine region. Then another 50 to 100 will be from Kampala. So that we, we are able to train them and ensure that they are able to meet the minimum standards and uh, uh, what is required of them to uh, get involved in uh, oil and gas business. We are also going to train, uh, like last year, another 70 heavy goods vehicle drivers. We are going to train 42 teachers from institutions in the Albertine region. Uh, these are vocational training institutions in the Albertine region which include uh, St. Simon Peters in Hoima, we include uh, Munteme, Teko Munteme in uh, Chikube, which include Kiema, Kiema VTC in Masindi, and, uh, and uh, yes, and, uh, and Kichwamba as well. Yes, another Kichwamba, which we trained 42 teachers this year. We, show, we shall also uh, have training and international certification for 60 welders. We've increased from uh, 30 to 60 this year in 2G to 3G. And this will all be uh, according to international <coughs> standards, the American Welding Society standards. We shall also train another 60 in 4G, 5G, and 6G. This is, this is the high-end welding where... Uh, uh, oil and gas, which is oil and gas specific. And uh, we shall also have 60 uh, uh, ECITB trainees. All this will be sponsored by CINOC uh, uh, for this year. And uh, in a nutshell, that is uh, what, what we have uh, uh, planned for this year as CINOC. And I would like to thank our partners uh, for this uh, conference e-conference Brado and the carefully selected uh, panel that is going to tell you more about what you need to know about oil and gas 
and uh, I would like to talk about three specific ones that are going to come in in the next session, which include uh, UNBS, and you know UNBS is here to, to demystify the standards, oil and gas standards, um, UNBS uh, in, together with uh, joint venture partners and the authority have come up with a catalog of oil and gas standards that will be shared on the on, which is actually already shared on the website both of U UNBS and the Petroleum Authority uh, I would encourage you to check it out so uh, the, uh, our guest panelist from UNBS will talk about that we also have uh, the chairman of Bunyoro Business Club, representing all the SMEs in Bunyoro, all the Albertine subregion, who will tell us his story and challenges that they have gone through and what they, uh, what they propose uh, we can do to solve them and ensure that they partake of these opportunities. And last but, the, uh, but not least, we shall have the Mr. John Walus Walusimbi, uh, who is executive director of the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises in Uganda. This is the association that brings together all SMEs in Uganda. He will talk about uh, all SMEs in Uganda and how we can actually strengthen them to ensure that they partake uh, or uh, have a chance to supply oil and gas. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, allow me to thank you and to, to thank our hosts, UBC, and uh, our dear panelists and uh, organizers of Prado, Brado, and uh, the regulator uh, who is the Petroleum Authority for this uh, e-conference. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Matthew Kiali Gonza, the National Content Manager, Sunoku Uganda Limited. Thank you for the opportunities, though there are also challenges, and I think uh, Engineer Fred, uh, the, the chairperson for Bunyoro Business Club is right in there, and other uh, players in the sector, the small, small and medium enterprises, you picked some stuff from the presentation from this very uh, first session of uh, the e-conference. Remember, this e-conference e is on UBC Live, and you can get us on our Slido, www.slido.com, for a comment or a question to the panel. Now we are going in for a break. When we get back, to going, it is going to be uh, a presentation of uh, looking at how, uh, of, of looking at uh, the practicals and the challenges faced by small and medium enterprises in Uganda, presented by engineer Fred Musinguzi, and we shall also have, of course, uh, Miss Sylvia, Miss Sylvia Kidabo, who is uh, the head marketing and public relations UNBS, to talk about the quality and the standards we have always had uh, from uh, the, the players in the oil and gas sector. And uh, Matthew, the national content manager, Sinok, has also talked about that. And we shall also have uh, Mr. Uh, John Warusimbi, the executive director of the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, Uganda. Let's go for a break and get back. Thank you for watching UBC. Partnership with Unyora Research Agency and Development Organization, Brado, presents to you the Sinuk Q1 National Content Supplier Development A Conference 2021 under the theme, Strengthening Local SMEs for Effective Participation in the Oil and Gas Development Phase in Uganda. Panelists include Mr. Alex Yamkama, National Content Officer, Petroleum Authority of Uganda, Martin Vyarhanga, Executive Director of Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization, Mr. Matthew Charlie Gonza, National Content Manager, Sinok Uganda Limited, Engineer Fred Musinguzi, Chairperson of Bunyoro Business Club, Mr. John Walusimbi, Executive Director, Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises in Uganda, Ms. Sylvia Kirabo, Head, Marketing and Public Relations, UNBS, and moderated by Mr. Vienkia Fred. The event will be live on UBC TV on Thursday, the 25th of March. Stay connected to the largest 4G network in Uganda, anytime, anywhere, using the Airtel 4G Pocket MiFi, available at only 123,000 Uganda shillings. This comes with 15 GB free, valid for a month. You can connect up to 10 users at a go and still enjoy a shared yet unmatched internet experience. Dial star 175 star 9 hash to activate free 15 GB. Visit the 
nearest Airtel shop to get one today. Airtel, the smartphone network. Airtel is regulated by the Uganda Communications Commission. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we are not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there. And they never tasted this good. Quatesimu! Quatesimu! For the first time in Uganda, anyone and everyone can own a smartphone and pay for it in daily, weekly and monthly installments for a period of a year. To check if you're eligible for the offer, dial star 284 star 49 hash today. You also enjoy free 500 MB on the purchased phone every month for the entire loan repayment period. Ha! Uganda you ma! Airtel, the smartphone network. Easter celebrates the beginning and the foundation of Christianity, the acquisition of a fundamental right that can never be taken away from us, the right to hope. This Easter season, watch UBC, your public national broadcaster. For us, we televise UBC Easter special with your religious leaders. Senuk Uganda Limited, in partnership with Unyora Research Agency and Development Organization, Brado, presents to you the Senuk Q1 National Content Supplier Development A Conference 2021 under the theme, Strengthening Local SMEs for Effective Participation in the Oil and Gas Development Phase in Uganda. Panelists include Mr. Alex Yamkama, National Content Officer, Petroleum Authority of Uganda, Martin Vyarhanga, Executive Director of Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization, Mr. Matthew Charlie Gonza, National Content Manager, Sinok Uganda Limited, Engineer Fred Musinguzi, Chairperson of Bunyoro Business Club, Mr. John Walusimbi, Executive Director, Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises in Uganda, Ms. Sylvia Kirabo, Head, Marketing and Public Relations, UNBS, and moderated by Mr. Bienkia Fred. Yes, welcome back uh, from the commercial break and we are still here for Sinoc Q1 National Content Suppliers Development e-conference organized by Sinoc and Brado. Brado is Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization. My name is Bianchi Afred. I'm still your host. And now we have come in for the second session of the whole e-conference. And as I told you, when we were going for a short break, I talked about uh, having Mr. Inge having engineer Fred Musinguzi, sorry about that, uh, the chairperson of Bunyoro Business Club, who is also the executive director of Moka Investment, to take us through the practical challenges faced by small and medium enterprises in Uganda. Engineer Fred, you're most welcome. You can use that particular podium. Um, good afternoon, viewers. My name is Fred Musinguzi, and... Um, uh, since I have got a distance between me and the producer and the microphones are sanitized, so allow me to move my mask and uh, give you my presentation. One, I would want, I would want to thank Sinoc and Brado for this conference. It gives us um, an opportunity to share with you what we do and the challenges we have. Uh, my name is Fred Msinguzi and I am the director of Moka Investment, a company that is under Bunyoro Business Club. And uh, I have got something to share with you about the challenges we face in, um, in the Albertan region in supplying goods and services in oil and gas. Uh, before I go to that, I would want to introduce to you Bunyoro Business Club. Uh, this was a club of, um, of uh, business, businesses in Bunyoro that uh, uh, basically SMEs, so we are registered with URSB. URSB and uh, we were registered uh, with the help of um, UIA. Uh, we were formed in 2012, and uh, right now we have got around 30 members, and um, we deal in hospitality, transport, um, co construction, uh, engineering. We have got accommodation, media, and hotel. 
Uh, we have got members like um, uh, Kitadi, we have got uh, Koko Galas, Monsonga Prosperity Animal Club, all these are guys who are working in oil and gas. So we are happy to have business there. Uh, what we do as Winyoro Business Club, we actually assist members to register their companies to formalize, and um, we also help them in trainings. Uh, we help them in uh, networking and lobbying for businesses. And basically we have got many achievements, and one of them is that um, we have helped companies to, uh, to, to register on the NSD list. I myself am registered as Muka Investment, and um, we have also uh, networked. Uh, some companies have got jobs. We have helped in cap capacity building. Uh, we have also helped them in um, business opportunities, like uh, we have got Kitadi, they do business with oil and gas. Uh, we also have uh, Spice f -Form. they get uh, adverts. We have got Animal Club, and uh, Muka, we have also got a lot of opportunities uh, in uh, down in the, in the Albertine. We have actually worked with Tallow Oil. We have worked with, um, we have worked with, uh, uh, we, we work at the airport, the Kabal International Airport. We are subcontractors with SBC and we have done them a good job. Uh, we do all their CSR projects and um, we also have worked with uh, Oranto. We have uh, prepared their camp at Mbegu when they are going to do their studies. So we did a good job there. We also supervised actually by some team from Sinoc. So we have been on ground and uh, we have also worked with Devonish Nutrition and uh, this is uh, a company from Ireland. Uh, they deal in pig, uh, pig farming and uh, feed mill. We constructed all their projects and we also work with several companies in oil and gas. Uh, right on the screen you can see we are opening up the project for Devonish. We had the Honorable Minister for Agriculture, uh, Mr. Sempija, and um, Mr. Uh, Ernest Keza, the Minister for Mineral Affairs, plus uh, delegation from uh, Ireland. And in the middle you can see that's the Director of Muka Investment, Fred Msingozi. So all that was a turnkey project. That's a feed mill with a constructed power line and all the pigger houses were constructed by Muka Investment, a local farm. And uh, we were linked to this project by UIA through Bujoro Business Club. Uh, we also did some work with, um, we also did some work with other companies. Uh, there we were at Mbegu, Mbegu Camp by Oranto. And we had a team from Sinoc. Uh, which came to supervise us. We also did a good job there. Uh, we also did um, construction of um, construction of uh, those uh, those are center f uh, facilities for Sinoc also in the in the camp for Oranto. They are going to do their seismic studies. So we did the job, a good job down there. So a local a local a local farm that is well prepared and is on the NSD list, it has got an opportunity to do business down there. Uh, much as we have done that, we have had some challenges, and that is the main point of discussion today I'd share with you. Uh, the challenges we have actually faced in the oil and gas is limited capital. Uh, most of our companies, we have less capital uh, to do the projects down there. Uh, we also have uh, a challenge of uh, lack of information. I'm happy that in this conference, I have uh, seen Mr. Matthew share with us information, and uh, we are going to be tapping into this information because it has been, there has been a gap. Another challenge we get is standards. Standards are actually disturbing us a lot. Most of us, we don't have the information on the standards. There's a company which lost a contract. It was supplying, uh, it was supplying meat but uh, they mixed it with offers. Uh, locally, it is, uh, for us, we mix them. But in the standards of oil and gas, they don't mix them. So they didn't know, so they lost the contract. There's another one who also lost the contract because he was transporting timber, and the timber was going beyond the truck. So it, it was like, uh, it was an excess load on the truck, so he also lost the contract. So some of those small, small standards, 
we need actually to understand them so that we can keep in business. We also have a problem with um, uh, the local hoteliers. They also don't know the standards. At times they don't um, meet the menu. You find them serving like pork in the hotel and you know, someone, some of them don't eat pork. So even in transportation, we have a challenge. We don't have the, the, the new cars, which are required in most cases by the standards of the oil and gas. We have got the old cars. So also the problem we have is timekeeping. So it's a challenge. Uh, in the standards, some people are sluggish in the way they do things. You find at times a hotel serving late. Someone has ordered for a dinner, but you find it's late. Then another challenge we have is attitude. Attitude, some people have taken long to, to change with events. Now we are doing things online, but someone will tell you that I don't have an email and that kind of thing. So it's also a challenge on our side. And um, uh, lastly, or second last, we have got lack of, uh, uh, we, we lack market connections. The market connections are a challenge, and also another challenge is coping up with the COVID, because some things are now online and people are not actually minding about uh, going online, the trainings and whatever. We are, we are attending some workshops online, so some people have find it a challenge. Uh, in conclusion, I would want to urge the PAU and uh, maybe other regulators to ring fence some of those small jobs, as uh, Mr. Chalgoz has put it, so that the local, the local, local farms in Vinyoro are not left out, but they are given opportunities to also maybe get opportunities either to work alongside big farms, like the way Moka has worked alongside with SBC, and we have done a good job, so it can help in capacity building. I want to thank you, viewers. And I want to thank you for other presenters and the opportunity actually to come in the, in the limelight so that we can maybe get more opportunities for God and my country, Fred Musingus. Thank you, Mr. Fred Musingus, uh, the engineer actually, and uh, representing Bunyoro Business Club. Thank you for the insight and looking to some of the challenges and you have posed some of uh, the, the, uh, the questions to Petroleum Authority of Uganda and Sinok, of course, they will be in a position to come over here and do something. Those of you who are watching, this is, this is Sinok Q1 National Content Supplies Development e-conference. We are live on the UBC TV, but you can, you know, be part and part of uh, the discussion by going on to our Slido. That is www.slido.com. And then the code is 92112. Now, we have totally run out of time. Allow me to invite... To invite Mr. John Walugembe, uh, I beg your pardon for the at the beginning I had mis, uh, mis, I had confused your name, Mr. John Walugembe, the Executive Director for Federation of uh, Small and Medium Enterprises Uganda, to come and also give us an insight of how they can strengthen the local enterprises' capacity to supply in the oil and gas sector in Uganda. So you are most welcome. Thank you very much, and thank you for the invitation. Allow me to remove my mask. Uh, firstly, I want to thank Brado for organizing this excellent conference and for inviting us. Second, I want to thank Sinok for being our partners uh, in the oil and gas sector. I think it's uh, very important that uh, we receive as much support as possible as we go into the next phase of oil production. First, I want to say that I'll, dis I'll describe who the SMEs are, because you're talking about SMEs and people may be wondering whom are we referring to. But first I want to say that there may be a bit of fatigue. You know, since uh, the discovery of oil some years ago, there have been a discussion about the opportunities, the opportunities and the opportunities. And that reminds me about the old boy who used to cry, wolf, wolf, wolf. Of course there was no wolf, but when the real wolf came, uh, it was not possible to, to be helped. So I want to tell SMEs, this time it is real. This time it is real. The final investment decision, please remind me, my colleagues from the regulators, is either to be signed or has been signed or will be signed soon. So it means that uh, you are either ready now or it will be very difficult to take advantage of the opportunities that exist in this sector. Firstly, let me define what the SMEs are. SMEs are micro, small, and medium-sized enterprises. I want to say that in Uganda, 93% of all businesses 
a micro, 4% are small. The balance, which is around um, 3%, are medium. So what you see is that the bulk of our businesses are micro and informal in nature. And that is what uh, my colleague uh, Matthew from Sinoc indicated. There's a lot of informality. That's the starting point. Second, uh, that informality makes it very difficult for these SMEs to benefit. Because I was going through what Michael was presenting. He said that you have to go through phases. You have to go through the legal. Those are hurdles. As an SME, you have to go through what you call the legal in terms of com A, registration. B, compliance. C, that be the technical in terms of quality and so on. Then three, the commercial. They want to look at y y how solid are you financially. Now, it's at this stage that I want to appeal. And then, of course, Sinoc is doing a very good work in terms of supporting SMEs. Mentioned about the training for teachers, the training for welders, and uh, the various conferences that are being organized. So I think the problem lies here. We need to handhold SMEs. We need to move away from general enterprise development, bookkeeping, so on and so forth, and we go towards handholding. SMEs need to be handheld. How? Personally, I have uh, looked at the requirements for registering with the National Supply Database, and they are not simple. You must get clearance from URA, tax clearance. You must get clearance from NSSF. You must be registered. So. People should be assisted practically. Shouldn't be taught in a class. Please reject, go and get clearance from NSSF. No. Let's get a team of businesses. And I'm happy this year uh, you told us that you are supporting about 100 SMEs from Bunyoro and 50 from Kampala. My request is let us have physical handholding. Are you registered? No. Let's go to URSB. You register. Do you have the money to register? Well, I can borrow. Please borrow. If not, then we can subsidize too. Let's look at your documents. Let's help you. Let's ensure that you have the necessary financing. Let's link you to financial providers so that we actually get you there. Because my worry is that at the end of the day, it's those people who are already strong enough that will take advantage or will go through uh, these hurdles. Now, in terms of the opportunities, I was, we mentioned that the opportunities, particularly in um, security, medical, hotels, HR, labor, clearly there are some opportunities that will be taken advantage of by businesses from Kampala. Then, because, yes, they have reserved the 16 sectors, but even within those, there are businesses where we believe SMEs from Bunyoro will stand an advantage. So let's try to segment and say, the businesses in Kampala can receive our help up to level X. The businesses from Bunyoro can receive our support up to level Y because we think they need more support in those areas. And then there are the, there are the soft issues that Inginiam Singhuji has just mentioned. The menu, you know. Yes, you have a restaurant, but the food you are cooking is targeting a Bunyoro or a Muganda or a Mutoro. You're forgetting that some of the people that are coming are coming from Tanzania, they are coming from the Arab world, they are coming from wherever. So how do we help those restaurants to change? The waiters. You come, you find 20 waiters, but it takes 20 minutes or one hour for the food to what? To arrive. Those are not things that may... No, it, it, those are, yes, you may target the business owner, but how about going a little deeper so that we address some of those soft issues as well timekeeping you know in africa we say the white man owns the watches we own the time how do we help our people to be more time conscious i forgot to mention that the federation of smes is the umbrella body for all smes in this country our role is to be the voice for small businesses if the federation does not exist it means that the big boys will take the prize home. We have to ensure that the concerns of small businesses are taken care of across the board, including in the oil and gas sector. We have over 100,000 members, and our role is not very different from what my colleague has mentioned, supporting businesses in training, advocacy, and highlighting issues 
that are of concern to the SME sector. We thank Sinok and Bado for this work and as a federation what we can say is that we are ready to work with you to ensure that more SMEs meaningfully participate in the oil and gas sector. This phase is extremely critical because it's when money is going to start flowing and it's important that ISMEs are ready to take advantage of those opportunities. Finally, there's also the issue of the national content plan that Mr. Msinguzi mentioned about. During the training, how can we help SMEs practically to develop these national content plans? It's one thing them going to the regulations. It's another thing being taught in a practical way. This is how you prepare it. This is how you price. Because after going through all those hurdles, people may want to overprice. How do we ensure that SMEs optimally price their products and services? Because you are pressed for time, I don't want to say any further. I want to thank Sinok and to thank Brado. I want to thank the Bunyoro Business Club. And I want to say as a federation, we are committed to work with you to ensure that we bring SMEs on board, both in Kampala and in Hoima. And uh, Sinok, you mentioned that you have signed an, you have signed an MOU with the Stanbic Business Incubator. I want to confirm that the federation is also working very closely with the Stanbic business incubator. So it would be nice if we can synergize our efforts to ensure that these SMEs are supported in this value chain. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. John Walugembe, the Executive Director for the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, Uganda. You are still watching UBC, and this is Suno Q1 National Content Supplier Development e-conference. Of course, it's powered by Suno Uganda Limited and the Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization, Brado. And before I invite uh, Mrs. Sylvia Kilabo, the Head of Marketing and Public Relations, UNBS, to take us through the standards. Everybody's talking about the standards, yes. Uh, in Kampala here, when we had just reached in the morning, we went to a small restaurant, and uh, my colleague engineer, Fred, was asking also for standards everywhere, meaning the issue of standards is everywhere in the country. Yes, but uh, when we are done with the Miss Sylvia, I'll be in position to call upon once again Mr. Alex Biamukama and Mr. Matthew Kialigonza to answer some of the few questions that have already been put in place. One is from the Slido and others have just been raised by the, ex the Executive Director Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises, Uganda. But now, allow me to invite the head marketing and public relations UNBS to take us through uh, the, uh, as in how they can strengthen uh, the capacity of, of us in the small and medium enterprises in terms of standards. Thank you, Madam. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Moderator. And I want to take this opportunity to thank my predecessors, the presenters, and also to thank Sinok and Bravo for this meeting. My name, as earlier mentioned, I'm Sylvia Chirabo. I work with Uganda National Bureau of Standards, and I bring you warm greetings from the UNBS family. My work this afternoon is quite simple. All has been said. And when I was listening to Ignia from Bunyoro Business Club, and he was actually mentioning the challenges that they are facing. And I want to speak directly to the challenges that have been raised in the area of standards. Uh, the main, uh, main of the questions that come to us as UNBS is what are these standards? It becomes a very big question and people wonder what are the standards? In a simple way, standards are there to guide us. They are there to give you the requirements for the products, for the services. We have realized through our discussion this afternoon that actually the oil and gas sector has a potential. The potential cuts across. It cuts across the products. These are the products that our people, and when we speak about the SMEs, I can't say much uh, more than what uh, Mr. Walugembe has said here. And we're actually doing some good job with the Federation in order to build the capacity of the SMEs to know what standards are and actually be able to produce in line with the standards. So the standards will guide you. What are you supposed to do? He spoke about meat and meat products. These standards are there. When he spoke about uh, services 
restaurants, transportation, the standards are there. So as UNBS, we have the requirements, we have the specifications, we have the guidelines to help you come up with a product and offer a service that is fit for the purpose and that can really address the challenge at hand. Uh, I want now to go to, um, and actually my colleague from uh, the Petroleum Authority and I think Mr. Charlie Gonza said it, that we have a catalog of standards already and as we speak right now we are talking about uh, more than 442 standards specifically made for the oil and gas sector. So uh, you as an entrepreneur, you as an SME, it is your responsibility to come and interface with the UNBS, get to know these standards, and if they apply to that particular business that you're dealing in with, you apply them and get the business. Because uh, what we need to appreciate, uh, the role of standards is to boost your business. Standards are not there to hinder you from getting uh, the opportunities, the business opportunities that are there for us in this sector. So I also want to, to inform our viewers today and listeners that actually as UNBS, we have a particular desk, a division that is set to help the SMEs. So if you have any challenge, get in touch with Uganda National Bureau of Standards. Because uh, through our interfaces with the SMEs, we've realized that they, they have a challenge of understanding the standards. We have gone ahead as Uganda National Bureau of Standards and simplified these standards. Some of them have even been translated into the local languages. We have illustrated them through visuals so that if you have a restaurant, for example, and I want to speak to the service industry in the oil and gas sector, if you have a, if you have, if you have a restaurant, you're running a process. You must be able to uh, respond to the demands of the, of the customers. So the standard will help to guide you on, on the do's and don'ts so that the, you, you, you are able to... Um, to, to deliver the service to your respective customers. So uh, what I want to tell our viewers today and the people of Bunyoro and also Ugandans who want to get an opportunity uh, in the sector, the procurement process I think has been streamlined and I, I was listening keenly to Mr. Charlie Gonza. They have uh, earmarked some contracts for the local people. But I want to assure you that you will not get these contracts if you are not following the standards. What do I want to say this afternoon? If you are um, an SME, please come to UNBS. We shall be able to take you through. Because one of the other key roles we play as Uganda National Bureau of Standards, yes, we develop the standards, but we also are key in making sure that these standards are being implemented. Come to UNBS, we shall build your capacity to be able to implement these standards. And I, I love it today when we are here with Brado and uh, the Federation, because as Uganda National Bureau of Standards, we are saying the standards have been developed thanks to our partners that we worked with in, or in order to come up with these standards. But now, the, ma the main challenge we have is the implementation and the uptake of these standards by the SMEs. So come to UNBS, and we normally appreciate when you come to us in your associations. Uh, if you have an association, Ingenia, you are speaking about the club you have in Bunyoro, when we have the federation, and you have registered within your respective sectors and you come to UNBS, we shall be able to train you and take you through these requirements so that you are able to deliver as required by the specifications that will be given to you by the, the companies and all the other potential uh, investors that are around in the region. I also want to, um, to talk about the issue of certification. Because if you have products or you have services, as UNBS, we are the third party uh, partner who will come there and endorse that actually uh, this particular restaurant has met all the requirements within the standard. And as UNBS, we can confirm 
that their processes are in line with the requirements of UNBS. And still, this takes me back to uh, what Mr. Walgembe was speaking about. If you want to get a UNBS quality mark for the products you're supplying to the oil and gas sector or for the the system certification for the processes, for the services that you're offering to the sector. You have to come to UNBS. You have to be, a re one, you have to be registered. We don't want to deal with uh, an informal uh, arrangement. We want to be sure that you exist and you're registered by URSB. He spoke about revenue. You must have a TIN, a TIN, and then we can be able to transact with you. But also what is important for you, NBS, we have a special package for the small and medium enterprises. Well, as we are going to charge around two million to certify a big supplier, a, a big company, for you, you will be able to pay half that cost and get the UNBS certification. So I want to say that UNBS is willing and ready to pattern with you SMEs, most importantly, to build your capacity because these standards are there. The standards have been developed, they are available, they've been cataloged, they are on the website. But if you have issues and challenges of conforming to the standards, get in touch with UNBS, we shall build your capacity and enable you to get businesses with government. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Chilabo Srivia from UNBS for taking us through that. But before you leave all of you, maybe you can be in position to intro this one. This is Daniel from Mubende. He says, to what extent has the mindset of the enterprises been prepared to appreciate and work towards achieving the specific needs of the oil and gas uh, sector? So I think all of you can be in a position to answer that. Maybe uh, the executive director can answer this one. And then we call uh, Matthew and, the, and Alex for the, next, the other questions. Okay, so I complete, sorry. Um, yeah, so um, the business owner from Bubenda has asked a very pertinent question. Uh, the, the mindset of business owners and the employees needs to be transformed uh, through awareness. They must be told that you must make fundamental changes in the way you do things if you are to access that market. That means you're looking at issues of behavior, but also they are, sometimes they have to make investments. Like when we say they are mixing offals and meat and so on, they may have to invest in more equipment. They may have to expand. They may have to get better chairs. They may have to get b better aeration. So Yes, there must be an element of helping them to change their mindset, but then we must also help them physically to make those changes, either through financing or linking them to people who can uh, help. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Madam Sylvia, you have an input on that? On how the... Oh, it's very good. Now, let's go for yet another short break and get back with... Uh, Mr. Matthew Kaligonza, the content manager, national content manager, Sinok, Uganda, and also Mr. Alex Biamkama, the national content officer from Petroleum Authority of Uganda, because there are issues to do with ring fencing, some of the works and jobs in there. There is also the criteria of uh, training some of uh, uh, the individuals of which Matthew was talking about, like that. Let's go for a short break and get back. This is UBC. Sinuk Uganda Limited, in partnership with Winyora Research Agency and Development Organization, Brado, presents to you the Sinuk Q1 National Content Supplier Development A Conference 2021 under the theme Strengthening Local SMEs for Effective Participation in the Oil and Gas Development Phase in Uganda. Panelists include Mr. Alex Yamkama, National Content Officer, Petroleum Authority of Uganda, Martin Biarhanga, Executive Director of Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization, Mr. Matthew Chaligonza, National Content Manager, Sinok Uganda Limited, Engineer Fred Musinguzi, Chairperson of Bunyoro Business Club, Mr. John Walusimbi, Executive Director, Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises in Uganda, Ms. Sylvia Kirabo, Head, Marketing and Public Relations, UNBS, and moderated by Mr. Bienke Fred. 
vipi kwate simu kwate simu kwate simu for the first time in Uganda anyone and everyone can own a smartphone and pay for it in daily weekly and monthly installments for a period of a year to check if you're eligible eight four star four nine hash today you also enjoy free 500 MB on the purchased phone every month for the entire loan repayment period ha, you gandhi you ma airtel the smartphone network Sinuk Uganda Limited in partnership with Nyora Research Agency and Development Organization Brado presents to you the Sinuk Q1 National Content Supplier Development A Conference 2021 under the theme Strengthening Local SMEs for Effective Participation in the Oil and Gas Development Phase in Uganda. Panelists include Mr. Alex Yamkama, National Content Officer, Petroleum Authority of Uganda. Martin Biarhanga, Executive Director of Bunyoro Research Agency and Development Organization, Mr. Matthew Charlie Gonza, National Content Manager, Sinok Uganda Limited, Engineer Fred Musinguzi, Chairperson of Bunyoro Business Club, Mr. John Walusimbi, Executive Director, Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises in Uganda, Ms. Sylvia Kirabo, Head Marketing and Public Relations, UNBS, and moderated by Mr. Bienkia Fred. Welcome back. You are still watching UBC and uh, we are now on uh, the third session of uh, the e-conference. That is question and comments from the Slido. The, first, the other team has already uh, answered some of the key questions that we are coming over. But uh, now there is uh, this one from David by Abigawa. Abigawa says, uh, it's a great opportunity to watch you. Uh, however, to what extent have those oil companies contributed to the SMEs on ground? Uh, yes, Matthew, it's for you. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Fredo and uh, uh, Mr. Abigaba. Uh, uh, the I, I beg your pardon. The, uh, how how uh, how Sinok has contributed to the SMEs? To what extent? Yeah, how the companies, oil companies, your one. Yes, mm -hmm. this is uh, I elaborated this in my presentation. Uh, Sinok and together with the joint venture partners. Uh, allow me to remove this. Sinoc, together with the joint venture partners, has uh, uh, put in place programs, especially trainings, that uh, are in support of the uh, SMEs. One of them is uh, welders training and certification to international standards. This year alone, we are training 120 welders. Uh, in the last two, uh, three, two years, we have been training 30 welders every year. Uh, we are also training uh, drivers of he heavy vehicle, uh, go heavy, heavy goods vehicle drivers. Seventy this year, we trained th seventy last year. We are training teachers. We are a program we are calling TTT. Train the trainer. We are training. Uh, last year we trained uh, eighty-four. Uh, this year we are training forty-two teachers to be able to uh, 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 transfer knowledge and skills to other U Ugandans who are thereafter employed in the SMEs. We hold quarterly development, supply developments uh, like this on a quarterly basis for them every year to ensure that uh, we pass on this uh, information, we tell you about the opportunities in the oil and gas so that the SMEs can be able to partake and prepare for them. Uh, Sinoc as well is uh, this year doing an enterprise development program that is targeting 150 SMEs um, we shall train them and ensure that they are able at the end of the training to meet all the standards, have uh, all the registration, formalization, and everything that is required to supply oil, uh, goods and services in the oil and gas industry. This among is these and many others are things that Sinoc, together with the other joint venture partners uh, and our regulators, uh, uh, PAU are doing eh? and we, we are actually this is just the beginning we are doing more and uh, yeah I think I thank you thank you so much but before you leave the podium another one was uh, also asking on uh, the criteria as the, an oil company you're going to be using in a bit to pick some of the people that you want to train you mentioned training teachers and these ones who are going for 3g and 4g but which criteria do you use is it for a particular area or the whole country Yes, uh, thank you very much, moderator, and thank you, uh, the person who has asked that question. The criteria, for example, I'll give you an example, is uh, 
For example, for the welders training, uh, we, we have dealt with the uh, vocational training institutions in the Albertine region. Uh, these are about five vocational in institutions that I talked about, including uh, Nile Vocational Institute, St. Simon, Munteme, and others, where we require them to actually send us or nominate. Uh, for example, if you are training 30, each of them will nominate uh, and send about six to be trained and certified in welding. That is uh, an example of a criteria that we have used in the past. Uh, our colleagues in Tilenga, Total, A and P uh, took the, the, the approach of uh, advertising in newspapers. And if you are very keen, maybe actually in uh, yesterday's newspaper, you should have seen uh, an advert calling for application to be able to partake of these programs. Um, we also have other, other criteria depending on the program. For example, the supplier, uh, I mean the training of, uh, heavy, uh, of heavy goods vehicle drivers, the Sevente, uh, we developed a short list from uh, a database that is uh, uh, from PAU, our authority, our regulator. Uh, they have a database of, of people who are uh, qualified and are willing to take up these uh, these trainings, we got uh, the seventy from there, and in the in the future we shall actually go into open advertising in the newspapers, where everyone is given an opportunity to apply. And uh, I want to tell you this because uh, national, because of uh, uh, us being uh, hosted in Winyoro or in the Albertine region, we usually give priority to our host people who are our. Uh, host communities to be able to partake of these jobs first or well, at least we give them a quota at least 50 percent of the trainees should be at least from the Albertine region so that they, they they as their host benefit first then the other can be shared among other people from all over the country uh, I hope that answers his question thank all right you thank you uh, to you mr. Martin Biarhanga because you are one of the organizers someone called opio alpha says how you want tv yes some of us we may not be in position to watch tv as a, an organizer can't you reach us in the, our respective communities also and the, disseminate this kind of information okay thank you very much mr fredo and especially the gentleman has that question uh, maybe in my opening remarks, I didn't talk about COVID-19. Uh, the justification of this conference, actually, e-conference, is under the guidelines of uh, the government of Uganda, Minister of Health, and specifically our legislator that is the power, Petit Minister of Uganda. Uh, we used to have normal conferences just in the halls, like 300 people, 500. We have been having this kind of, kind of conferences. But, but because of social distancing, and the COVID-19, we are unable. So now that's why we are going e-conferencing. Everybody, everywhere, we are going e-conferencing. So we are, we are assuming that uh, this method of approach is reaches the millions of Ugandans. But if we are in the smaller conference, maybe we would have targeted only 200 or 300. But now I think millions of Ugandans have watched this program. So I very much feel that this program is very effective. And I wish, uh, if given the opportunity, we should continue with the same program. I thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. As we continue now, the last one goes to uh, Mr. Alex, uh, the, the National Content Officer from Petroleum Authority of Uganda, the regulator. Uh, Engineer Fred Musinguzi was talking about ring fencing. That can't we have a policy that uh, hopes to ring fence some of the works and jobs so that they can be you know, done and implemented by people within the country. Just one like this, and then we go for closing remarks. Thank you very much, uh, moderator. Just allow me to remove this. Thank you so much, engineer, for that question. Um, that question, I think, is already catered for. The regulations that govern the upstream um, oil and gas sector and the midstream oil and gas sector clearly stipulate um, 16 services that have been ring faced for Ugandan companies. I, I implore um, viewers out there 
to be friends with, uh, <coughs> to make the PAU website your friend. There's a lot of information, but those services are there, and they include services like foods and beverages, they include services like security, ICT, waste management, uh, environmental studies, civil works, transportation and logistics, um, HR management. There are 16 uh, in number. Those ones are clearly ring-fenced for what we call the Ugandan company as, as stipulated in the regulations. So the aspect of ring-fencing is already catered for and we continuously evaluate the uh, capacity of Ugandans and I'm very confident that that list will continually expand so that we have a much bigger list to be reserved for Ugandan companies. Thank you very much. All right. You are still watching UBC, and this is SINOQ1 National Content Supplier Development e Conference 2021. I want to extend my gratitude to UBC. Thank you so much for giving us this very opportunity for this one. And before I invite, before I invite Matthew to give us some closing remarks, uh, UBC, thank you so much, all the producers, the technical team for the ambience you have uh, created for us to make sure that uh, the show is a success. I want also to extend gratitude to John Chaze from UNBS. He has not been in position to, uh, to participate, but he is with us here. And uh, to you, Ms. Sylvia Kirabo from UNBS also, thank you so much for participating. Uh, Mr. Matthew Kialigonza is coming up next layer. Alex Biamukama, the National Content Officer from Petroleum Authority of Uganda. Thank you for coming. And uh, my boss, the consultant, Mr. Martin Biaruanga Brado. Now it's my honor to invite you, uh, the National Content Manager, Sinoku Uganda, Mr. Matthew Kialigonza, to give us some closing remarks of the e-conference. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Moderator Fredo for the job well done. Before I give my closing remarks, allow me to make a small rejoinder to what uh, my colleague from the authority has just mentioned. Uh, what we do uh, in terms of uh, ring fencing or prioritizing as CINOC is uh, when there is a job, uh, we first consider uh, the region, the region as the Albertine region, our host communities, if the job, if they have capacity, people or companies there, Ugandans there, I have capacity to do them, we give them priority. If they, there is no capacity uh, locally or regionally there, we move on to national. We move on to Uganda, where we look at uh, if there is a Ugandan uh, supplier or sub Ugandan companies that can actually do the job. It is only in the event that there is no uh, local capacity, no national capacity, that we engage uh, international cap uh, uh, suppliers. And uh, here, uh, if it is, if the service is uh, reserved for Ugandans, we require uh, the international company to form a joint venture with the national company to make uh, to actually supply uh, that company. It is only. Uh, in rare circumstances where the uh, service is very technical and highly uh, scientific or oil and gas specific that we give the entire contract to an international companies. So that is uh, a rejoinder just wanted. And this is actually a requirement by law. It's a requirement in the national content regulations that we follow this procedure. Yes, in, and, uh, in, in, in addition to the 16 reserved uh, uh, industries to or works to be done by Ugandans. And on that note, allow me to uh, give my closing remarks. I would like to thank uh, our, our partners, Brado. Uh, we'll also thank uh, our panelists, uh, Mr. Alex Biamukama from the Petroleum Authority for that very elaborate uh, industry update and uh, we thank you so much for honoring our invitation. We'd like to thank uh, our three panelists, the very technical, very, who, who did the job very ably, uh, that included engineer Fred M Musinguzi, who is the chairperson uh, Bunyoro Business Club, who did an able job to actually tell us exactly what is on the ground. He has, he has done work with oil and gas, he has seen the challenges, and we are glad he shared those challenges with us. Uh, these are learning lessons. 
Yes, and we use them to make uh, uh, other people uh, better and able to supply. We'll also like to thank uh, Ms. Sylvia Chirabo, Head Marketing and Public Relations, for demystifying the standards and uh, sharing us what uh, the requirements for uh, the oil and gas standards are. She also told us there's a catalog that has been developed that can be found on UNBS website. Or well, actually, she invited you uh, to, jo to go there and uh, visit them at UNBS. I hope you'll follow the SOPs because of COVID. Um, I also, last but not least, would like to thank the Executive Director of the Federation of SMEs in Uganda, uh, Mr. John Walugembe, who has ably and s simplified in a very simple way, showed us uh, how to strengthen how we, what we need to strengthen the local, uh, the local uh, SMEs to be able, what needs to be done to be able to uh, strengthen the local SMEs to ensure that they partake in the oil and gas industry. On behalf of Sinoc, we'd like to thank all our partners, Kabalega TV, uh, UBC uh, and the other media partners, Monitor Publications and others who have uh, joined us and uh, we look forward to Q2 that will happen in next quarter. I uh, thank you very much and God bless you. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Thank you Martin. Thank you Brado. Thank you Mr. Alex Biamkama. Thank you Engineer Freedom Singuzi. Thank you Ms. Sylvia Kirabo. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mr. Waluge Mbe John and everybody. Together with the technical team UBC and techno technical team Kavalega TV, Bunyoro Online. My name is Bianca Fred. UBC allow me to pass on my advert that I work with Spice. <laughs> I now would pay for that. Thank you so much for the wonderful job and opportunity to give, uh, that you have given us tonight to host this uh, Q1 Sino Q1 National Content Suppliers Development e Conference. Thank you so much. Good night. The day the world stopped was the day we found where to go. From now on, we are not going to leave anything on our plates. Because we've learned to savor the moments that were always there.